Welcome back, y'all. We're picking up where we left off here in the Pick That Color application. Uh, the last time we worked on this, we basically just set up a basic layout where we've got these uh, three stack views that are rendering four buttons on the screen, and they've each got a uh, hard-coded color right now. We haven't actually assigned that randomly, and in fact, we haven't really done anything inside the actual view controller class. We pretty much just set out a basic layout. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is uh, actually assigning a random color to each of these buttons. And then we are also going to have a start game button down here at the bottom. And as we click that button, it'll just generate new colors each time. So let's go ahead and get started by uh, we're going to open the assistant editor here. And we're going to connect each of these buttons into our view controller class as IB outlets. So let's click on the first button here and let's control uh, and right click and drag into the view controller class and we're going to say button one and we're going to make sure that that's an outlet connection type and we're going to click connect and then we're going to do the same for button two three four and five okay now that all of those are connected we actually want to assign them uh, random colors when the game starts. So to do that, there's kind of two approaches we could take here. We could have some function that explicitly sets some random color for each button, but that kind of doesn't feel super dry to me. Uh, and remember dry basically just means don't repeat yourself because then we're going to have to do it for each one of these buttons. I feel like it makes more sense to me to do it inside of a loop. I'd like to have these buttons in an array so that we can loop through them and assign a random color to them. And, uh, to do that, uh, what we're going to do is create a, an array of buttons up here at the top. And then when the view loads, we're actually going to insert all of those buttons into that array. So this will be really easy. We're just going to create a property on this class called buttons. And we're going to set it equal to an empty array of buttons. And this syntax that you're looking at right here might be a little bit new to you. You might not know what this is. Basically, all this means is we're going to create a variable. We're going to call it buttons and we're going to set it equal to an empty array of UI buttons. So all that this really does right here is initialize an array of UI buttons and this will be empty. There will be nothing in it um, because we haven't actually put anything inside of it yet. So inside the view did load. We're going to say buttons equals an array, and it's going to be an array with button one, whoops, button one, button two, button three, and button four. And so now, uh, like I said before, the view did load function is called anytime, uh, is called anytime that the view actually loads for the first time. And then if you'll remember, super.viewDidLoad is just making sure that we call the parent version of this function first, which is uh, good practice. Um, we can actually remove this little comment right here. We don't need that. And we have to make sure that we do this initialization right here inside the viewDidLoad function because we're not actually going to have access to these IB outlets until the view does load. So now that the view did load and we call the super uh, function, we can... Uh, we can actually assign these buttons inside of that array. So now that we've done that, to actually assign random colors, it's probably a good idea for us to create a function called maybe like new game that we can call anytime we're ready to set up a new game and pick four new random colors, pick the, pick the correct color, so on and so forth. So let's come down here and let's create a function and we'll call it new game. And inside of this new game function, we're going to loop through each of the buttons so we're going to call for button in buttons and we're going to say button dot background color equals UI color and put an open parentheses so that we can initialize a UI color. And we're going to pick this option down here, this red, green, blue and alpha option, making sure that we're not picking this display P3 red option. This is not the correct one. If you use this one, you'll get a very different color than you would get from this red, green, blue, and alpha one. So let's click that one. <clears throat> and actually, I'm gonna go over here and click this view controller file so that it's a little bit easier to look at here. And uh, to make it even easier to look at, what I'm gonna do, uh, you may not have seen me do this before, but this is pretty common to um, drop a line for, if you have a lot of parameters inside of a function or a class initializer or something like that, it's pretty common to 
put them on new lines so that it's a little bit easy to read. You can see this is much cleaner than what we were dealing with before. So um, obviously what we're doing is we're looping through each of the buttons and we're assigning a background color, but we need this background color to be random. And you might remember me saying before that RGB values, which is exactly what we're putting here, red, green, blue, um, these are usually express, expressed as numbers between zero and 255. So it would be some red number between zero and 255, green, uh, and so on and so forth. And um, actually in a UI color, uh, Apple decided not to go with the normal scheme of zero through 255, and they actually opted for an approach where it's a number between zero and one. And so I guess the cool thing about this is that it allows us even more combinations than just having a number between zero and 255. I don't know what the max number of colors is for an RGB value. We can actually look it up real quick. Um, Uh, it looks like the, oh, it's a really big number here. So 256 times 256 times 256 equals, what is that? 106, oh no, 1,677,000, no, no, no. That would be 16,777,216 possible colors. So that's a whole lot of colors for just a normal RGB value. But technically with Apple's implementation, they allow us to pick a number between zero and one and it could be any decimal number. So I guess that would allow for even more combinations um, than a typical RGB value does. But anyways, it's still really common to uh, use the zero through 255, 255 approach. That's why in the design of the game that I showed you earlier, the number at the top is a number between zero and 255. Um, and that's actually, I'll show you a little bit more about that a little bit later in the video when we are, or sorry, in the module when we actually are putting that number up there. But for now, what we need to know is that we are uh, putting a number between zero and one. And so you can see here that these are all supposed to be CG floats. And you probably haven't seen that before and you might not even know what a float is or a CG float. So a float is basically very similar to a double. Um, in fact, the double was derived from the float whenever the person that created doubles created them. Basically, a float is also a decimal number. A double is called a double because it occupies double the amount of memory of a float. So um, double the amount of bytes that a float would use, but they behave the same way. A double could just be a much bigger number or technically it could be a number with a lot more decimals if that was what you were doing as well. So don't think of a float really as being any different than a double. If I were you, I would go do a little bit of research, make sure you understand the difference, but they really do behave the same way. They're basically the same thing. A double's just a bigger number. So um, with that being said, now we're looking at a CG float. So what's a CG float? So CG, anytime you see CG anywhere in iOS programming, CG means core graphics. It's a framework that Apple created and it's used pretty often throughout the UI kit framework. That's what they opted to use. The reason it's a CG float instead of a regular float is because it has properties that a regular float doesn't have that they needed to make the UI kit and core graphics frameworks possible. Honestly, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what CG means. Don't worry about the difference between a CG float and a regular float. It doesn't matter. They're going to behave the same way. But anytime you see CG float, now you know what it means. It's basically the same thing as a double. Um, just it, it, it's a smaller piece of memory and, uh, and half the memory size of a double. That doesn't mean that a double, real quick, I know we're a little bit off topic here. I just want to make this clear. Just because a double occupies twice the amount of memory as a float does not mean that it is twice the size as a number of a float. It's way bigger than a float. In computer programming and in uh, computer science, when we double the amount of memory that we allocate for a number, it goes up exponentially in size, not linearly. So if we, if we allocate twice as much memory for a double, it's not twice the size of a number, it's exponentially bigger. Um, in fact, I think technically, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think a float is something like 3.4 times 10 to the 38th power, something like that. You can actually look this up and double check me. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think that's pretty close. And then I think a double is um, the biggest number that it could be is like 1.7 times 10 to the 308th power or something like that. Um, I think I'm pretty close on that. Anyways, doesn't matter. It's a, a double's a way bigger number, but you could see as a float being 
um, 3.4 times 10 to the 38th power. I mean, that's a massive number. It's really, really big. So we, we rarely have to worry about the memory limitations of a float. But if you do, use a double. Anyways, let's move on and get back to the actual project here. All that we care about is that we need a CG float between 0 and 1. And that's really easy to do. And obviously, it needs to be random. So we're going to type CG float dot random. And we'll pick this first option here. And we're going to say in 0 dot 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 1. And all that this means is we want a random CG float. And we want that number to be between 0 and 1. Pretty simple stuff here. Anytime we put dot dot dot, that just means a pick something. Or that just that's a range. So anything between this range. So now let's copy this. We need the same thing for red, green, and blue. And then we want the alpha value to be 1. Uh, the alpha, for anybody that doesn't know, is just a transparency number. So 1 means that this number is completely opaque and you can't see through it. 0 would mean it's fully transparent and you can see straight through it. And then you could do anything in between. So 0 0.5 would mean that it's like half transparent, basically. But for this game, we just want it to be a 1 because we don't want to see through it. So now after the view does load and we assign our array of buttons, we actually need to just call this new game function so that it picks four random colors. And if we click the play button here to run the actual application, we'll see that that is definitely happening. It's picking four random colors here. So like I said before we end this video, we want to add that new game button down here at the bottom so that we don't have to keep rerunning the application every time to see four random colors. But if we do, we should see four new colors. Um, but let's go ahead and add that button down here to wrap up this video. Um, so let's go up here. Let's click button and let's drag that on screen. I'm going to close the assistant editor here for a second. And I'm going to make this 20 pixels from the left, 20 pixels from the right, 40 pixels from the bottom. And then I'm going to give it a height of 40 pixels. This is pretty common for me whenever we're making these applications. I like to make the buttons about 40 pixels high. And we're going to put a uh, start game as the title of this button. And like I usually do, we're gonna make the font 16. We're gonna make it bold. Uh, let's make the text color white. I think that's what it is in the design. And then we'll make the background color green. And let's open the assistant editor back up and let's uh, connect this as an IB action into the view controller class so that we can call the new game function anytime we click it. So we'll control drag, make sure that the connection type is action. And then we're going to say on start game button tap. And then once we tap that button, we're going to want to call that new game function. Now let's go ahead and run the application and we should get what we want. So we've got four random colors here. And then if I click start game, every time I click it, we're going to get four random colors. So we're making good progress through the application. Um, the next thing that we have to do is actually pick the correct button and then show the value at the top. And then uh, the last thing will be just to tell you whenever you tap on one, whether you're correct or incorrect. So uh, that wraps it up for this video and uh, I'll see you in the next one.